I'm Dexter Pratt, and I'm director of the Cytoscape project in the Idacare lab at UCSD. I'm going to tell you about Cytoscape and how you can use it to work with network models of biology. This presentation covers both the widely used desktop application and the growing array of Cytoscape web tools and services. We'll wrap up with an example of techniques used in some recent projects. Dr. Fan Zheng, a postdoctoral researcher in the Idacare lab, who invented an algorithm used in the example, will be available to answer questions about the Cytoscape ecosystem in today's class. Here at the Eiderka Lab, there is a diverse range of research that goes on, and we are the home of Cytoscape, originated by Dr. Eiderker in 2002. I have a great development team. Several other labs, notably the labs of Gary Bader at the University of Toronto, and Alex Pico at the Gladstone Institutes are also primary Cytoscape developers. There is also a large community of independent developers and authors of network content who contribute to the Cytoscape effort. Networks have many applications in biology and other fields, more than we can cover in this presentation. Since I don't know your backgrounds, I'm going to briefly introduce networks in biology, but then move on to describing the Cytoscape toolset. Many situations in the world can be usefully modeled as networks. Essentially, anything that you can think of as entities can be framed as a network. The entities are the nodes in the network, and the relationships between them are the edges in the network. In our work, the most common networks we deal with express the relationships between proteins and genes. Sometimes these networks are called pathways, where chains of A causes B express the mechanisms that produce larger scale effects the phenotypes of a system, drug mechanisms, host pathogen interactions, signaling mechanisms dysregulated in a tumor are all good examples of pathways. Other networks are very large with thousands and millions of interactions. You might also think of those as databases. Networks have many other uses, such as the interactions between cells and the tissues or between bacteria and viruses in a microbiome. The nervous system of an organism is physically structured as a network, and the interactions of all the organisms in an ecosystem are often thought of as a network. And of course, everyone talks about social networks. It's a good source of examples, since we all have intuition about the meaning of our relationships with other people. Here is a network that expresses multiple kinds of relationships between biological entities. Transcription factors are proteins that control expression of their target genes. In this case, the genes that code for proteins involved in the programmed cell death process of apoptosis. Some of those genes are also affected by the transcriptional co-regulator mkRN1, and this small network describes the state of all of those interactions. Here are some basic techniques that can be applied when a system is modeled as a network. Topological properties of the network can be informative, identifying highly connected nodes, peripheral nodes, or network clusters, uh, clusters with being subnetworks whose member nodes are more densely connected to each other than with the rest of the network. Clusters of interacting proteins may correspond to a coordinated mechanism or complex, or at a large scale, a uh, cellular structure like the proteasome. A central methodology is, of course, the mapping of data onto the entities or relationships in the network. If nothing else, Visual styling of nodes and edges based on data is a powerful visualization tool. For example, the size of a node representing a protein might correspond to its abundance in the sample, or the color could indicate whether or not it affects growth if you crisper it out. That might be the only thing that you use Cytoscape for. That's okay, but there is lots more that we can do. Here is a network published in Gordon et al. 2020, a paper from our collaborators at the Krogan Lab at UCSF. It is also published in Index. The network represents affinity purification mass spec data showing the binding of SARS-CoV-2 viral proteins to host proteins in HEC 293 T cells. We will talk more about Index later, but you can see that this is a computable publicly available network, not just a diagram. That's important because while this is a nice way to look at the binding data, it is also a readily usable form for more analysis. In a recent collaboration, we used that data 
in combination with three other data sets and a large public network of known protein interactions to generate this hierarchical model of the viral infection. Remember clusters from slide seven? This is a network describing clusters within clusters. Each one corresponds to a set of interacting proteins determined computationally. You can see the nodes are displayed as pie charts. Each pie slice corresponds to one of the four data sets, and the size of the pie is related to the number of proteins in the cluster that are hits in that data. The dark blue corresponds to the Gordon et al. data. Networks are tables, a table of nodes and their properties, a table of edges and their properties. And many times, your work with networks starts with you loading a table of your experimental data onto the nodes in an existing network. Or perhaps you have determined a set of interactions in your experiment. In that case, you create a network from those interactions. It's worth saying again, once you have your data as attributes on the nodes and edges of your network, a powerful technique is to style your network so that it tells the story of your data. And that is where Cytoscape comes in. Here is the Cytoscape desktop application. The main view is for displaying your network, and it is paired with the view to see that data as tables of nodes and edges. You can have multiple networks in your workspace called a session. You can snapshot your current workbench and save it, returning to it later in the same place you left off. Here is a different session. I'll use this to walk through a basic workflow. One thing that I can do is to select a subnetwork. In this case, the human protein nodes around the blue viral protein. Since we only have 30 minutes, I'm generally going to skip showing you the details of the interfaces and focus on what you can accomplish. I can drag the nodes by hand, but I can also apply an automatic layout. Here's a result of the COSI compound spring embedded layout. Now I'll change the graphic style, both the default color of the nodes and the rules for overriding the default depending on data attributes. I've also manually added a graphic annotation. One of the key reasons for the success of Cytoscape is that it embraced the idea of plug-in modules or apps before that was a standard practice. Yes, even back in 2002 when we did not carry supercomputers in our pockets. There are hundreds of apps that add functionality to Cytoscape and they seamlessly install from the Cytoscape app store. I'll show you two popular apps, Bingo and Mcode. Mcode is one of the cluster finding programs. The clusters and their components and statistics about the network are displayed in the results panel. Bingo lets you perform Go enrichment on the genes or corresponding proteins in your network while it also does clustering. Go is a database that is just a little bit older than Cytoscape, which is three human curated hierarchies, ontologies, of either biological processes, molecular functions, or cellular components. One concept in the ontology can be a superclass of the other concept, i.e. a Mustang is a kind of Ford car, which is a kind of car. Or it can have a part of relationship, i.e. cars have wheels. Each concept in Go is annotated with the genes with which it is associated. For example, E2F1 and RB1 are associated with cell cycle. And of course, a gene can be annotated to many concepts. Genes play many roles. So for every cluster that Bingo finds, it compares that set of genes to the sets of genes for each of the Go concepts. In this case, just the human gene annotated concepts and ranks them according to their similarity. This can give you insight into the possible roles that the discovered cluster might be playing in that network. And if your network is constructed or selected based on experimental data, then the Go annotations on your clusters may help you understand what the processes were that resulted when you induced DNA damage in that cell line. Finally, Bingo helps with the interpretation of this cluster by showing you a chunk of the Go hierarchy selected by the top annotations. The subset, superset, or part whole relationships are the edges with the arrows showing the direction of the relationship. And it highlights the concepts that are most similar to the cluster. 
So that is what I'm going to say about Cytoscape Desktop for now. Cytoscape.org is an extensive site. It, of course, will let you download the latest version, but it has just tons of tutorials and other useful materials. On to Index. Here is that SARS-CoV-2 network again, displayed in the Index web user interface. In this role, it is a resource for published networks, and you might notice the Open in Cytoscape button that will take this network down to the desktop application, provided that you have it running on your machine. Index plays many roles. Here is the overview. And you can find networks to use in applications. You can store your networks in your private account. You can share your networks, so we're like Dropbox for networks. You can disseminate your networks. You can publish your networks as computable, actionable data. You can work with your networks in Cytoscape, and you can integrate your networks with your applications, or with your scripts, perhaps. And here it is in the Cytoscape ecosystem. Here is Index. It is a web service with a programmatic interface to store and retrieve networks. And that's how the desktop uses it. Up on top are the web applications, such as the index user interface, that we have seen one aspect of so far. There are more web apps, including one that we're going to look at later, and there will be more as this ecosystem becomes more and more cloud. Note the big CX in the middle. That is the common format for exchanging networks within the ecosystem. Here is the index homepage. I want to call out the box at the top left for searching index, which is a great place to start. And you definitely want to click the Featured Networks button. Give yourself a quick tour of interesting public networks contributed to index. Now, when I log in, here is my account page. More or less what you would expect, but I want to point out the little bar on the left that shows how much disk space I have left, about four gigabytes. That's right, we give everyone 10 gig. So you can have lots of networks, or you can have really big networks. An interesting feature are the little eyes on the right in the show column. These let me control what networks you will see if you come to my account, much like a social media site. Creating an account is easy. Go ahead and make an account. It will only take a minute. Now, just a quick trip back to Cytoscape. You can save that green network to your account and index. That's different from saving your session. A session is a snapshot of everything you're working on. This is a document, just one network. And look, here's that bingo network we made, saved for later and ready to share with my friends. Now I want to get back to publishing networks. First, I want to show you the new interface for viewing networks in Index. We've upgraded to use a more modern web software framework. One of the most important points is that the interface is clean and we think pretty, so you can make a good impression when someone comes to see your network that you just published. Version one goes online in a week or two. And here is a lab account presenting its best networks to the world. Your networks, public networks, and networks that people have shared with you are all accessible via the Index API. And we have client libraries to make that simple. You can use them in your Jupyter Notebook, your R script, your web page, and if you are hardcore in Java. So to sum up, Index enhances workflows and facilitates collaboration, it provides a channel for dissemination, publications can link to Index networks. Now, here's an application that uses multiple aspects of the Cytoscape ecosystem. It's a one-click search to investigate a gene set in multiple ways, finding related pathways, querying a protein interaction network, or finding disease, drug, and tissue associations. Here's the pathway tab. Now, it isn't novel that we're finding pathways similar to a gene set. That technique is even older than Go. What's nice about this is that the pathways are networks in index, and we are constantly adding to them. In the same way, we consult multiple public networks of protein interactions to find neighborhoods involving your genes. Gene associations work the same way. I really like the human protein atlas of gene cancer correlations. Sometimes I feel I get really insightful results where my gene set is strongly associated with a small set of cancers and not with others. Once you have a result, you can save it to index, open it in Cytoscape, or go to the original network in index. The original network is most interesting for the protein interaction and gene association networks because you get a chance to try different queries, not just the default query that iQuery used. 
And now we come full circle back to that hierarchical model. You will see that these models are in the same lineage with the networks that result from analyses in apps like Bingo. These are multi-scale clustering algorithms, often called now community detection. And the result is like Go, but it is based on data, not human curation. You can think of the model as a structured set of hypotheses. It can be focused on the biology that is active in the context of your data. Here are the data sets that we'll be using in our example. Two host pathogen interaction maps and a genome-wide CRISPR screen. The data defines the set of protein nodes that will be at the center of our model. In this case, that's primarily the human proteins bound by the viral proteins. Now we select a large network of known protein interactions. That will be the substrate for our model building. Then we select a subset of the large network that is the neighborhood around our proteins of interest. The neighborhood is found using the Cytoscape Diffusion tool. It works by considering the starting nodes as hot and then letting that heat diffuse out across the edges. After a specified amount of diffusion, we create the subnetwork from the nodes that retain the most heat. We are using Psi Community Detection, a recently released Cytoscape app to build the hierarchical model. We are using the High Def Community Detection algorithm recently developed by Fan Zheng. FAN will be available for discussion today. Psi Community Detection is built with the ecosystem in mind. The algorithms run on a remote web service, not inside Cytoscape. That means they can be easily used by other applications. Here are two views of the resulting model, different arrangements of the hierarchical structure. Each community discovered by HIDEF is a subnetwork in the input interaction network and the set of proteins in that subnetwork. Now we need to figure out what those communities are about. Much like Bingo, we will find known pathways or Go terms that are similar to each community to help us put a name to it. This time, we will use the G Profiler service to perform the annotation. Each community is labeled with the best matched gene signature found by G Profiler. Communities below a threshold remain unlabeled. The node color is proportional to the percent overlap between the community members. Note that many communities are not a good match for any curated gene signature. Let's go back to the interaction network that the model was built from. We will use that Cytoscape pie chart node style to highlight how the data maps to the proteins. For example, the ACE2 protein is reported as being bound by a viral protein in one data set, and it is shown to be needed for viral success in a second data set. The Psi Community Detection app lets us zoom in from the model to see the interactions that are underneath a community. This community was labeled with the Go term, Structural Constituent of Nuclear Pore. This best match corresponds to the viral-bound nucleoporin proteins from Gordon et al. in blue. The nucleoporins have known roles in viral infection. However, this community shows interconnections from those to a number of heat shock proteins made apparent by the full G-profiler analysis below. This poses the question, can heat shock proteins be involved in viral infection? The answer is definite yes. For example, HSPA9 is better known as HSP70, which has been previously linked to viral infection, such as in recent work on Zika virus. Now we have two linked hypotheses for part of the viral mechanism. That seems somewhat plausible, perhaps enough so to justify more investigation. And I'd like to tell you that the app will also let you automatically put the pie chart formatting on the model. Sorry, not yet. We had to use a Python script for that step. So, that's the story. I hope you saw some tools and techniques that could be useful in your work. Don't hesitate to post questions on the Cytoscape Help Desk Google group if the documentation and the tutorials isn't enough. See the cytoscape.org site for both of those. Thanks very much for listening. Bye.